I'm going to answer the question of why Trinidad and Tobago is the best place in the entire English-speaking Caribbean to own and operate an electric vehicle. After my last video regarding electric vehicles, many of you had questions and thankfully I was able to get in contact with the COO of Jenny's on the Boulevard who granted me access to their charging details over the course of many months. So I'm back here with the details and the facts as to how much it really costs to charge a vehicle in Trinidad and Tobago. We'll be looking at three vehicles today, the Tesla Model 3, the GWM Aura and the MG ZS EV. The different ranges that you are seeing on your screen right now were taken from the various manufacturers websites so if the range looks kind of off for example the gwm has a smaller battery than the mg zs ev but it has more range don't come at me for that go at the manufacturers they know how they tested their products let's get into the video at first all these numbers may look like gibberish to you but they are really easy to understand i promise you for this to the left you have the start and end time of the charging process with the date in the middle you have the total duration of the charging process then you have the energy kilowatt hour which is the total amount of kilowatt hours that went into the battery then you have the cost per kilowatt hour and then you have the cost for the entire session now it must be noted that these are d1 rates i'll explain more as to what the rates are for the different tiers later in the video but for now let's take a look at the second one here we have the vehicle charging charging for 5 hours and 42 minutes at a total of 34.67 kilowatt hours. 20 cents per kilowatt hour added up to $6.90 plus fat. So we're looking at roughly $8 here. But what does that $7.76 mean when it comes to 34.67 kilowatt hours? Now this can be affected by a lot of different factors, but on average, an electric vehicle travels 4 miles or 6.4 kilometers per every kilowatt hour used. So if you do the math, that 34.67 kilowatt hours you just paid $7.76 for can carry you a total of 136 miles or 218 kilometers all things considered that could be different scenarios maybe you are a bit on the heavier side maybe you are only going uphill constantly different factors are affected differently but on average 34.67 kilowatt hours can get you roughly 136 miles or 218 kilometers but what does that look like in real world well let's say you are living san fernando and for whatever reason you work in port of spain you have 218 kilometers to play with that is san fernando to port of spain for work and then back from port of spain to san fernando and then back to port of spain again which is 180 kilometers total and i'm not calculating it based on what google maps said here of 54 kilometers i'm calculating it based on 60 kilometers so i'm factoring in the human element you made a detour you stopped by the store to get something on your way home on your way to work so it's 180 kilometers you only spent $7.76 at D1 rates. Again, we'll get more on that later on. It's going to be slightly more for residential, but right now we're talking about D1 rates. Let's say you are living in Arima, so you have to go to Port of Spain for work. Remember, 218 kilometers, $7.76 at D1 rates. You can go from Arima to Port of Spain six times. A total of 210 kilometers and again i did not calculate this based on the 30 kilometers google maps is saying i calculated it based on 35 kilometers so we are leaving room for error that's arima to port of spain then back to arima then back to port of spain then back to arima then back to port of spain and then back to arima so let's say you are lucky enough to be living in the west Diego martin that's Diego martin to port of spain google maps is saying 14 kilometers but again let's say 18 kilometers that is Diego Martin to Port of Spain and back 11 times, which for somebody who is working 8 to 4 or 9 to 5 Monday to Friday is two full work weeks of commute just from a 34 kilowatt hour charge, which costed $7.76 at D1 rates. Now, that was just for a quick 34 kilowatt hour charge. Remember, these cars have much bigger batteries than that. These are the rough estimates to charge the Tesla Model 3 12TT, which is VAT inclusive, the Aura 11TT, again VAT inclusive, and the MGZS. 15 TT VAT inclusive. Now these figures, if you are calculating it at home at 20 cents per kilowatt hour, they may seem off. And that's because even though the battery is rated at one thing, for example, the aura is 63 kilowatt hours, the usable kilowatts is actually less. So I calculated it at 20 cents by 54 kilowatt hours, which gave me the 11 TT when you add in the VAT. Now I would have made mention of something called D1 rates throughout this video so far. Let's go for that. We have different tiers and rates for electricity in Trent Tobago. Industrial customers, they are tiered based on D1 d2 d3 d4 d5 and then have e1 to 5 that is something the average person who has an average house won't have to worry about that is businesses industrialized sectors things like that when it comes to the customers at home your house my house what we have to focus on is the residential rates or the domestic rate which ranges from one kilowatt hour to 400 kilowatt hour 26 cents per kilowatt hour then you have the second tier which is 32 kilowatt hours and then you have over 1000 kilowatt hours which is 37 cents per kilowatt hour so with these three residential tiers here 
how much will the new figures be to charge the electric vehicle? These are the rates you are going to pay to charge the vehicle at home. Now these rates are one, I am calculating it from zero to the maximum for the battery, which is zero to 100, which you should not be doing in the first place. It's 10 to 80, that's the sweet spot. But let's just say you are at zero and you want to go to 100. These are the rates. And also the second caveat, I also calculated this based on the rated kilowatt hours. Now the GWM, for example, has a maximum of 63 kilowatt hour battery, but only 59.3 hours of that is usable. So the figures that you are seeing there were calculated based on 59 kilowatt hours for the GWM Aura. I was unable to find the exact usable battery percentage for the Tesla and the MG. So I calculated it based on the 76 kilowatt hours for the MG and the 57 kilowatt hours for the Tesla. All that to say, if the usable battery kilowatts is actually less than the 76 rated for the MG, these figures here will go down slightly and the exact same thing for the Tesla. But how good do we truly have it here in Trinidad Tobago when it comes to the cost of electricity per kilowatt hour? Well, let's take a look at some other islands within the Caribbean and for the sake of simplicity, we'll just use the Model 3 because that has a battery kilowatt hour that's in between the other two. If we had to pay Grenada rates, which are 40 cents EC per kilowatt hour residential, that is $1 TT, that would cost $64 VAT inclusive to charge a Tesla Model 3. If we would charge Jamaica rates, which is 25 cents USD per kilowatt hour or $1.70 TT, that would be $109 TT VAT inclusive to recharge a Tesla Model 3. Over in St. Kitts, they are slightly higher at 26 US cents per kilowatt hour or $1.70. 76 cents TT, which will add up to $113 to recharge a Tesla Model 3. And get this, over in St. Lucia, they have a whopping rate of 40 US cents per kilowatt hour or $2.72 TT. So to recharge a Tesla Model 3 over there would be $175 TT VAT inclusive. Now remember, we are using the Tesla Model 3, which is a 57.5 kilowatt hour battery. If you were to go to the MG and it's 76 kilowatt hour battery, if you ever needed a full charge, it will cost you $232 TT VAT inclusive. And at that point, electric vehicles just don't seem like it makes sense anymore. At that point, just keep your gasoline vehicles because you're saving like, what, $40, $50 at max? It's not even worth it. And that's why Toronto Bago is one of the best places in the Caribbean right now that you can purchase an electric vehicle and actually save money. Now, all rates are set to go up, but even with the new proposed rates, Toronto Tobago still has one of the lowest electricity rates in the Caribbean. And that is because we are a manufacturing sector. So the low rates that we pay is actually beneficial on two fronts. It's beneficial because it lowers the cost of manufacturing, allowing us to compete on the islands by exporting Buster and Solo and Sunshine Snacks and whatever else. And then on the other side, it actually gives us the opportunity to have electric vehicles and recharge them very cheaply. Now, I also get that electric vehicles won't suit everybody's lifestyle and everybody's driving pattern. That is something you now have to consider for yourself based on the figures I outlined, your own research, and what you think is best for you. I'm not telling you to buy or not to buy. I'm just here to present the facts, and you will in turn make up your mind based on what your life requires. I think that point is going over some people's head where they are thinking, well, I'm not buying an electric vehicle. It will suit my lifestyle. Well, then just don't buy it. That dies all.